Hello and welcome into this message. I want to release to you all uh, some major prayer secrets that I have never released on this ministry channel before that I've never released to you all before. And the reason why I want to release this to you today specifically is because I know that there are many of us who are praying amiss. I know that there are many of us who are not receiving answers to our prayers. And it doesn't mean that God isn't answering them. It just means that we're not in a place to receive. And it could mean that we are praying amiss. I want to actually read that scripture to you really quick so that we can start off with this message on the basis of scripture. That is James chapter... Well, now I want to make sure that's the right one. Give me a moment. Yes, that is James chapter 4, verse 3 through 9, where it says, You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasure. So many of us are just praying amiss, and that's why our prayers are not getting answered. So I want to release some prayer secrets to you today. What's interesting is that I don't really have any notes for this message. It's really not a message that I plan to come on and share with you all today. It's just something that as I was sitting before the Lord within the spur of the moment, I felt the leading of the Lord to share with you all ways to pray powerful prayers so that your prayers are being answered and you're not praying amiss and you're able, you're, you're in a place to receive. And what I mean by your prayers are being an answered, I don't mean that there's a time where God is not answering your prayers. I mean that you're in a place to receive the answers. And a lot of times, some of those answers aren't things that maybe we initially wanted. Maybe God didn't give you the answer that you wanted to hear, but it's a no or maybe or not right now. Nevertheless, you hear from God and you know the answer. And so I was sitting with the way for the Lord and I felt the leading of the Spirit to, to come on and share with you all some of these powerful prayer secrets. So I want to first start out by sharing with you all how most people pray. Most people pray by going to God and they're asking for things in the wrong spirit. And what I mean by that is they're going to God and they're praying and it's almost, uh, it's almost like repetitive routines like the word of God said that the Pharisees would do where he said they would just be in this constant repetitive routine of praying, but it, their prayers were in vain. One, because their lifestyle was not aligning with what they were asking God for. And two, because they were putting more faith in the routine of praying than actually believing that God was going to do what it was that they were praying for. So instead of going to God in the spirit of praying and asking in the sense that maybe God will, maybe God won't, we have to shift the way that we are praying to God in a way that we're not so much asking because we're leaving room for the possibility that God won't. We have to shift our prayers to align with scripture so that way we're praying authority prayers. We're praying prayers that we know God wants for us too and they are not a miss. They're not a miss. And so over time, I begin to shift my prayers to be more powerful. And when this happens, like I said in the last message, when you're in a season of acceleration, when your prayers begin to change, right? But when this happens, God begins to answer prayers before you pray them. I said this in the last message. I want to actually take you to a scripture that aligns with that. It says, this is Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24. It says, I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. Why is this? It's because they're not praying amiss. When you're not praying amiss, when you're coming before the Lord with things that you need and you're standing on the word of God, Philippians uh, 4.19, where it says God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And you know this scripture in and out, through and through. You believe it and you're standing on it. Isaiah 65.24 comes into effect where he says, I'll go ahead and answer their prayers while they're still talking to me about their needs. And I'm going to break down to you how this happens and why this happens. You get into a place when you're praying authority prayers, you get into a place where God begins to answer your prayers before it even fully leaves your lips. 
because you're coming to God, you're coming in the presence of God, you're going before him in a way where you know that it's already done. You know that it's already done. So I wanna to talk to you about where we are and where God is. And so we all know that God is, he's, he's in the highest place, like he reigns over all. And what I mean by that is, yes, we are, the, we are little G. He says, don't you know that you are gods? But we are not God. We don't reign over all. And so we're bound by space and time. God is outside of space and time. God is eternity himself. He is the beginning and the end. So much so to the point where he never begins. He never ends. He just continues to go. He just keeps going. He's not bound by space and time like we are. So when we pray for things, when we pray to God, as it says in Isaiah 65, 24, still talking about it, right? Still talking to God about the things that we need, asking him and going before him and staying on our feet, uh, on our knees, right? Day and night, praying before him. He says, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. Why is he doing that? Because in the realm where God is, it is already done. God has already seen it happen. He's not bound by space and time. We're looking at our life and saying, Lord, please do it by this date. Please do it by that date. And God is in a place where he's seen that it's already happened. It's already done. I want to take you to Isaiah 57 verse 15, where it says, The high and the lofty one who lives in eternity, in eternity, the holy one says this, I live in the high and holy place with those whose spirits are contrite and humble. I restore the crushed spirit of the humble and receive the courage of those with repentant hearts. So if you come before you, this, I'm telling you how to pray authority prayers so that you receive answers to your prayers. You're not praying amiss and you receive answers to your prayers before you even finish praying them. Sometimes before you even get to start or begin to pray these prayers, God will come to you with the answer. He'll send the answer. It'll be manifested before your eyes. And so what you have to begin to do, according to Isaiah 57, verse 15, is go into, like it says, that high place and holy place. You have to go into the heavenlies of heavenlies and begin to go before the Lord using his word. Speak his word back to him and say, Lord, I know this is what your word says you have for me. And I'm thanking you in advance for it because it's already done. According to Isaiah 65, 24, I hope that you're writing these scriptures down. This is how you pray authority prayers. You don't go into the holy of holies. You don't go into the heavenlies, right? And begin to ask God for things with a little doubt there, leaving room that maybe he wants this for you. Maybe he does not want this for you. It is already done according to the word of God. And you have to believe this. When I began to see a shift in how God was moving on behalf of my prayers, it was when I started to pray God's word back to him. And that means I'm not saying, Lord, can you please make sure that I'm able to have this thing done? Or Lord, can you please make sure that this relationship is mended? Can you please make sure that I'm able to move into my new home? Can you please make sure that this is paid? Can you please make sure that we have the finances for this? Can you? I'm not going into the heavenlies and asking God, begging him as if he does not want to do that for me. I'm going into the heavenlies and I'm reminding God of his word. And I say, Lord, you said that your word does not return back to you void. You said that your word is true above all else and every man is a liar. So even if I think for a split second that you don't want this for me, then I myself must be a liar because your word stands true over even the own, my own thoughts roaming in my head. And so you have to begin to pray God's word back to him. I want to read you a journal entry that I wrote. And this is how I just want to remind myself of daily when I'm praying my prayers. And I'm releasing this to you because I want you to begin to pay, pray powerful prayers too. And so it's really just a faith walk. You have to understand that whatever desire that God has put in your heart and it's a godly desire. Remember, godly desires glorify God. Fleshly desires glorify you. But whatever godly desires that he's put in your heart and you're wanting to see these things come to pass and you're praying to God that he moves on your behalf for these thing to come, things to come to pass, you have to understand that it's already 
done. There's a realm that exists outside of this physical realm, outside of what you can see with your natural eye. And that realm is eternity, eternity. And it is where God lives. He lives in eternity because he is eternity. That means that everything that could possibly have happened in your life that aligns with God's will, he looks down over the earth and sees that it's already happened. It is already done. It's already done. This is why we call those things that be not as though they are. This is why we say that kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, because the will is already done in earth. It's already done in earth. That new home you've been asking for, it's, it's already done in the heavens. I mean, you call it down to earth. You call God's will for your life down to earth. And I was just talking to my husband the other day. Um, no, I know actually the other day it was this morning, but it feels like it was the other day. I was talking to my husband this morning about the timeline that the Lord gave me a vision of um, about maybe two and a half, three years ago, where I was sharing sharing with him how the Lord had gave me almost an open vision of a timeline, and it looked like a conveyor belt. And what I mean by that is imagine a conveyor belt that moves like this and it's just constantly moving and on that conveyor belt there are people hundreds thousands millions of people houses cars events things like this that are taking place and there's time markers on this conveyor belt which means that when people reach a certain time marker that a certain event is supposed to happen on this conveyor belt we can't see it but 2024 has already happened, 2025 has already happened, 2050 has already happened, year 3000 has already happened. And here is God looking up from his, pers looking down from his pers perspective at this conveyor belt and he can see all of the events in your life that have already happened, it's already taken place. So what you're doing when you're praying to God, you're not praying for him to maybe do this, maybe not do this. You're going into the heavenlies, using your faith to see things that he has for you already. And you're thanking him for these things. Why? Because it's already done. It's already done. According to Isaiah 65, 24, it says, I will answer them before they even call me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers because he already knows what's in your heart. He already knows what's in your heart. Why? Because he put it there. He put the desire there. So you pray authority, authoritative powerful prayers knowing that it will be answered for you a lot of times before you even get done praying it according to isaiah 65 24 it'll be done for you quickly with acceleration by thanking him in advance that it's already done you're not thanking him in advance that it's already done because you're forcing yourself to believe that it's already done you're thanking him in advance that it's already done because you know it you know it's already done just because it hasn't shown up yet in front of your eyes, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. I talk about this all the time. It's already there in eternity. Can you believe that it's already done? Can you believe that it exists outside of what you can see right now? Can you know that? Can you not just believe it, but take it a step further and know that? Because when you go to God from that place, you, you come before him with a different spirit, with thanksgiving. Philippians chapter uh, four, verse seven. I read this scripture to you the other day. Give me a moment, I'm gonna pull it up. It's Philippians chapter, and I'm gonna actually start at verse six. Philippians chapter four, verse six through seven. It says, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. So you're going before the Lord. You're not worrying. You don't have a spirit of worry or anxiety like maybe God will do this for me. Maybe God will come through for me. You don't go into the heavenlies with that spirit of worry and fear on you that it may not happen, that God may not come through for you. You go up there knowing, right? Like it says, Philippians chapter four, verse six, not worrying, but instead being thankful and praying about it. You go up there into the heavenlies when you're in the secret place with the Lord. You send, when I say go up there, this means you're sending your prayers up. 
you tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done because it's already done according to Isaiah 65, 24. Then you will experience God's peace. Once you know that what you have been praying for is already done, you're just waiting with an expectant heart. You're not worrying, right? You're not, you're not anxious. You're not fearful. You're just waiting in expectation because you know it's already done. You're just waiting for it to appear before your eyes. You're just waiting to get the notice. You're just waiting to get the phone call. You're just waiting for the proof, the physical proof. You're not worrying, you're not fearful, you don't have anxiety. And I know that this is, I'm knocking down some of y'all's door. I know that I'm talking directly to a lot of you when it comes to what you're going through right now. And it says, verse seven, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. It's supernatural because you understand, when you go to the Lord with an understanding that all that he could ever want for you all the desires in your heart that are desires he put there, godly desires, and your prayers align with that, and you know that it's already done, you sleep with absolute peace at night. There is nothing the enemy could plant in your mind. There's no worry. There is no lie that he could tell you that could shake you. You are unmovable, absolutely unmovable. He could craft up the craftiest lie in the books and you cannot be moved because you're standing on the word of God and you know what God said about you. You know what God said should be done and it doesn't matter how long it takes. You know that it's already done. It doesn't matter how long it takes for you to see it. It doesn't matter how long it takes for you to get that call, for you to get that, um, that notice in the mail or whatever it is, whatever it is that you're waiting on. It does not matter how long it takes. You know that it's already done. You're unmovable. And so this exceed, it's supernatural. Once you get into this place and you begin to pray these prayers, it exceeds anything you can understand. And it says his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So God, it, it just comes with an understanding that he's in eternity and we're not. So a lot of times we go before the Lord and we pray prayers to him as if he's an earthly father, as if he's a human father, but he's a perfect father who already knows what you're coming to him for before you already release it out of your mouth. And not only that, he's already answered it. He's already said yes to it. Can you believe that it's already done? So I know that this is going to really bless a lot of you. I want you to comment below if it has blessed you. And better yet, I want you to share this message with a couple of people who you know will be blessed by it as well, who will benefit from it. Maybe they're struggling with their prayers. Maybe, they're, maybe they've been asking the Lord for something specific, but they're praying amiss. Who knows what it is? But I know that because it's blessed you, that it's going to bless a few other people. And I ask that you share this message. I ask that you will subscribe to this ministry channel if you have not already. And, and if you feel led to, because I only want you to be here and locked into this ministry if God has put you here. Because if God has sent you here, I know that there's something very specific that he has for you under this ministry. There's a reason why he sent you here. I want you to lock in. I want you to stay because I promise you as a result of you being obedient to God and faithful that he will increase you, not just externally, not just in your life, right? I'm talking not just things that you can see, but internally. He will increase you when it comes to your growth in him. You'll continue to go deeper in him. Right, so you'll continue to mature in him. And as a result of that, then things will begin to shift on the outside. It starts from the inside and works his way outside. So if God has sat you here, put you under this ministry, I'm glad that you're here. Welcome, I know a lot of you are new. I want you to actually put in the comments below if you are new here and you just came across this ministry channel. I wanna send you a warm welcome. I ask you to go in the description and download the roadmap if you're new here is going to help you determine exactly where you are on your journey with the lord and what he's requiring of you next and there's also a few other resources there for you to check out in the description i also like to open the opportunity for those who feel that god is pressing it in their spirit to get seed and really good ground 
This is the perfect place to do it because this ministry is anointed for increase. There are hundreds of testimonies at this point, most probably in the thousands of people who have been obedient to the voice of God and they've sown into the ministry. And as a result of that, God has been able to move in their life in supernatural ways because of their obedience. And I promise you by the spirit of God that God is not trying to take something from you. He's trying to multiply something back to you. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Give and it shall be given back unto you with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. There is not one seed that I do not stand for and pray over that God will multiply it back to you. And no, I'm not asking God. I'm not asking because his word already says that he will do it. I'm going before the Lord, reminding him of his word, partnering my faith with your standing on the word of God. And because of that, it is through our faith, me partnering my faith with you, that God is able to multiply your seed back to you. God is able to give you a harvest according to the seed that you have sown. That is how our God works. I've seen it with my own eyes. No one can tell me nothing. So if God has placed it on your heart to put seed in the ground, this is the perfect place to do it. It doesn't have to be this ministry, but it does have to be one where there's really good ground. And so I encourage you to do that and not procrastinate on it. There's a link below for you to do that as well. And there's other resources that I'm sure I know for a fact will aid you in your walk. We just released Daily Bread 365 Devotions. It's a devotional book. Not going to say too much about it in this message because I have really went in depth on it in the past couple messages. But if you need a devotional book, that book is extremely prophetic. I encourage you to grab it. The link is below. So I love you all. I know that this blessed many of you. I'm always praying for you and I'll talk with you in the next message.